So my name is James Muritu, I'm the founder of uh, ProGreen Innovations uh, Limited and uh, basically what we do here is that we turn waste plastic into usable fuel. Uh, our passion is uh, to clean the environment, uh, but not just clean and throw away the plastic, but recover value from uh, the waste plastic. So this is an idea I've been running with for the last two years, a uh, lot of research into it. and. Uh, in the last one year now, we've been doing some pilot tests and we are seeing quite some good results. It's actually a particular type of plastic, plastic and that's uh, where our research has uh, evolved because we had to spend time trying out all kinds of plastics. But with time, we were able to narrow down. And what we came to realize is that you have some specific type of plastic that will give you now the right fuel. Not every plastic will work. Currently, we are able to get two kind of fuels. Uh, we have fu uh, petrol equivalent, and this is petrol that is usable with uh, petrol uh, engines, small and mid-sized petrol engines. Um, we also have de diesel equivalent fuel, which is usable with heavy machinery uh, that uses diesel, diesel, diesel uh, generators, diesel engines as well. So it's it's two two kind of fuels, diesel and petrol. <laughs> Uh, yes, actually it, it does for cars as well. I, I have my vehicle here, I mean, th that's what I use in my, in my diesel car. It works. This is an awesome invention, guys. It's awesome. Hakuna bangi apa. It's something that works. It's awesome. Um, in terms of how this fuel performs, I should say uh, we, have a, a, we have a good product. And... Um, Talking to some of the people, who, the people who've used it, I mean, it's a great product. And I'm proud to be a Kenyan. I'm proud to say that it's Kenyan designed, it's Kenyan made, and it works. By background, I'm, a, I'm an engineer. So over 20 years, I've built IT systems, software and hardware across Africa. I've lived in Australia, lived in North America, Europe as well. So designing and building systems. Uh, but the last three years, I got an interest to get into chemistry. And so I began a small experiment um, um, on uh, recovering aluminium. And out of sheer accident, uh, one time we melted plastic, which gave us some jelly liquid. And that's where an interest uh, came about. And I, I started researching in terms of when you burn plastic, uh, what's the raw material that comes out? And the journey started from there, and we've never stopped. It's a number of steps. The first thing is you need to collect waste plastic waste so we have um, we have volunteers we have groups we have women who go out there they also scrap here they will collect all that plastic and they'll bring to us so once you bring to us is a sorting process so you need to sort the plastic and our team knows which one to pick so once you sort it out you need to shred it so there's a shredding machine that you just saw when you're coming in here once you shred that you need to clean it up so when you clean you remove all the impurities you remove all the dirt once you've removed all the dirt, then you need to load the material into a reactor and close that box very tightly. So that's an oxygen-free box. There should be no oxygen. So once you've loaded that, then you need to heat it. So down there, you'll see a furnace. So the furnace is heated with our own fuel. So we have our own briquettes, which are all made here. And that's what you use to heat it. There's also a temperature control system. So depending on what you want to produce, what will happen is there will be two production cycles. So the first cycle is to produce crude oil. Mm -hmm. That crude oil is what is referred to as heavy oil, heavy fuel. Mm -hmm. Making that is very easy, and it will just take you a couple of years. So the second cycle of production is to refine crude that, that crude oil, mm -hmm. also referred to as uh, poly-heavy fuel. Uh, so what we do is that we play around with temperatures so that we can decide whether you want petrol equivalent or whether you want diesel equivalent. So it's a two-shift process. You first produce crude oil, and then secondly, you refine uh, the crude oil. This is all fabricated here, right here. Nothing imported. It's all made in Kenya. Uh, you'll soon be meeting my partner here, who is a mechanical engineer, a seasoned guy. Um, so he's done most of the work in terms of fabricating. So we have our own equipment here. Um, but we fine-tuned the process. So the first time we started, we had a smaller machine. What you have just seen behind me, that's much smaller. Then a couple of months ago, we went to a bigger box. So there's a lot of chemistry uh, involved here. 
and uh, with sufficient funding, we actually want to do a third prototype from next year, which will be bigger than what you're seeing there and with a better technology. So it's a lot of experimental work, a lot of learning, a lot of research, uh, but this is where we are today. I met uh, with the James uh, online. Uh, actually, uh, he found me online, then uh, he communicated to me. I invited him into my workshop and uh, he found that I was doing the pyrolysis machines. Uh, initially, my work is to is to produce, to fabricate and uh, produce uh, these uh, machines for producing oil and uh, also for recycling uh, waste. This plant, it is our uh, make. We source the materials from the local dealers. We buy metals, we fold, we do everything. Actually, I'm the one who makes these machines. Uh, everything here is me who has designed and uh, made it. It takes me like uh, three months to complete this machine. When I'm working alone, but when with this, some other guys helping me, uh, it takes like uh, 14 to one month. I tell Kenyans, uh, where we have reached today, we have a lot of knowledge. We can do things on our own. We don't need to go to China, America, India to buy things. All the materials are locally sourced uh, from scrapyards, uh, from waste. Uh, it's, the only thing we've bought from a shop is a temperature control, which we bought somewhere in River Road. But all the others, the chuma to the kununua around. We've not commercialized yet. Uh, we want to do this in the right way, in the right format. Uh, we want to pay any taxes that have to be paid, so we've not gone to commercialization stage yet. Uh, where we are right now is uh, the pilot stage. So in the pilot stage, we've involved a few willing users. It was not easy, because you're telling somebody I have fuel here that you can test. It was a very hard sell, uh, but we were able to get at least people who are constantly using it, and they've really helped us to refine the product. So they will use, they'll give us feedback, we refine again, so right now we have close to 10 people uh, that can give a positive report uh, on the fuel. Personally as well, I'm one of the users. Um, so we've not gone commercial yet, but we have active, uh, active users who are actually using it. And we've gone through that process. Uh, it was a very long process, very tedious process. They are very meticulous, and I should say that they've been very supportive. Uh, so a month ago they issued us with an environmental impact assessment report. And they gave us a one-year license uh, to commence uh, our operations, uh, which, is, which is great. So yes, we have uh, a permit from NEMA. No funding from somewhere. These are all my own savings. I've just bootstrapped from my own pocket. Um, nothing from anybody else. It's all from my pocket, all self-funded. In the coming future, the vision I have is we want to set up a similar venture across five sites in Kenya. Our vision is in any particular town in Kenya, we can actually collect the waste and turn it into value within that town. Let me give you an example. If you go to Nakuru, there's a lot of waste. So I don't need to make fuel from here and take it to Nakuru. So I just need to set up a similar setup, get all the waste from Nakuru town, and take it through a similar process. All going well uh, from January. I think we should be seeing something. Uh, there are quite a number of things we had to do. The first thing was to patent. So we've been working very closely with Kipi. So we've started that process. Uh, the second uh, process was to trademark, so we wanted uh, a trademark name. Um, but the other very important step is certification. So at least cabs have also been very helpful. So there's a, cert there's a certification process that you need to go through. So you want to sell this. You don't want to dispense it in a fuel station. We want it to be packed in a suitable product. So the CAB certification process is very thorough, which takes 56 days. So once all those processes are complete, which I foresee will take between three and four months, then we should be able to, to hit the ground running. We actually have uh, seven uh, full-time employees, uh, young people fresh from university, uh, people who didn't have any jobs, but they saw what we were doing and they were willing to join and they've learned through the ropes. Uh, so we have, again, seven full-time uh, 
people working across different areas. Uh, some collecting waste, we actually have a yard. Others call, uh, operating the machine. So we've trained them and they've been able to, to get. We also have casual laborers who are mostly women. And the work of the women is to sort the plastics, uh, to clean it up, uh, and they're all from the neighborhood. Those ones are paid uh, on a daily basis. Many challenges. Uh, one, I mean, I don't work full time here. I have another job day to day. So this is something I'll work in you know, over the weekend or in the evening. So one time <laughs> is no time. Secondly, funding, very expensive. We've actually put a lot of money here. A lot of failures, you try again and it's more and more money. Um, the third thing is what I refer to as acceptability, gaining acceptance. Yes. You tell somebody you can make fuel, they think you're nuts. Actually, somebody told me, Munavuta bangi, wacheni kuvuta yo kitu munavuta. So convincing somebody that it works it takes a long time. Um, and then, of course, getting the right talent, uh, it's not easy to get people who understand what you're trying to do. So it's taken my brains and my partner's brains to join. I mean, to, to really come up with something workable. But getting talent around that understand this kind of technology, it's not easy. Um, yeah.